get your Big East headlines here. Jerry Mack is not overrated, and he's proving that here in the NYC. But standing in the way of the orange are some hungry Hoyas. JT3 wants to follow in his father's footsteps and take G-Town back to the championship game. Check it out right here, right now. It's going to be hot. They gather in Gotham to separate, to step up, to stand out, to leave their stamp on these streets. Let's go! Jerry McNamara has done just that, willing his team to two thrilling victories. McNamara, three-point run! Oh! Jerry McNamara for the second day in a row. The Orange now face a familiar foe. The Hoyas are hungry, and so is their coach, to follow his father's footsteps back to the top. They all want to carve it on the trophy, pound it out on their chest. So many have come here, but we are the best. 10% luck, 20% skill, 15% been a great couple of days and nights of basketball here in New York City as the Big East Championship now moves into the semifinal round and the Orange are still here their fans awfully excited about a couple of thrilling victories the last couple of days and an old rivalry is renewed tonight as Syracuse takes on Georgetown welcome to continuing coverage of championship week presented by seven up this is the Big East Championship presented by Aero Postal. Syracuse and Georgetown in the first of two semifinals we'll have for you tonight here on ESPN. Pittsburgh and Villanova, the number two team in the nation, coming up after this one from New York City. Hi, everybody. Dan Shulman and Len Elmore. Glad you're along with us again for what should be a great night of basketball. I think everybody in the country has seen the three-pointers by Jerry McNamara. They know what he's done the last couple of days, but you're equally impressed with the way he's gotten his teammates involved in those two wins. Well, certainly in the UConn game, Jerry McNamara was a distributor early, and the reason is he wants to get others involved. A terrific job. 13 total assists, nine in the first half. Syracuse had five players in double figures in that game and 47 points from the much more line front line getting them involved early is motivation to run the floor to get involved in the half court offense and really to build leads and set up the heroics for Jerry McNamara these two schools met less than two weeks ago on senior day at Georgetown and the Hoyas had a fairly easy 15 point win what did they do well well it was all about Jeff Green a 6 9 sophomore hit the sweet spots against that 2 3 zone he's got the ability to hit the short jumpers read the zone and find people and Georgetown's going to rely Lie on him is entry passes to try to break that 2 3. Time now to take a look at our TD Waterhouse Star Watch. And for Georgetown, you can pick so many different people. They're so balanced. We have chosen Brandon Bowman tonight. Well, Brandon Bowman is senior forward. He's going to be a major factor because of teammate Jeff Green's success. Green with 18 points against his own. You know, Syracuse is going to point to him. Bowman's going to have to have a big game. And Jerry McNamara, what can he do for an encore? <laughs> Central in the orange success. He makes his teammates better. A double double against UConn. 17 points and 13 huge assists he has played 80 of 85 minutes so far in this tournament despite a slight groin strain and he rolled his ankle last night but he's still playing some fabulous basketball for more on a G Mac Jerry McNamara let's go to Mark Jones Yeah, McNamara guys telling me that after both games so far in the tournament he spent 30 minutes back at the hotel in a tub of ice to try and get better says two things are going to be key for tonight's game to conserve energy he's going to have Eric Devendorf bring the ball up against pressure and two he says hey I'll take myself out of the game like I did last night just to stay fresh but the best medicine for Jerry McNamara might have been a text message that he received from his former teammate Akeem Warwick this morning it said two down two to go Jerry back to you guys well they are halfway to accomplishing what no team in the Big East history has done Mark and that's win four games in four days to win the Big East Championship a look at our starting lineups tonight beginning with the orange and in the backcourt the senior McNamara and the talented freshman Devendorf up front three quarters of the at times maligned junior class but all three of these guys have been playing extremely well here in this tournament Daryl Watkins in particular has had some of the biggest games of his career 
for Georgetown a very balanced bunch coach John Thompson the third says I really have six starters along with Daryl Owens Cook and Wallace both threats to score in the backcourt and up front the man in the middle Roy Hibbert seven foot two he can be a menace around the rim Georgetown had 17 offensive rebounds in their win over Syracuse two weeks ago. Tonight's telecast is available in stunning high definition on ESPN HD brought to you by Dish Network. Dan referencing Mark Jones's comment about Eric Devendorf bringing it up against pressure to rest Jerry McNamara. That's kind of a high risk strategy Devendorf on the season more turnovers than assists. But against UConn and air pressure, Devendorf had zero turnovers in 35 minutes. So we'll see how that works. Len, how was that? It was up briefly for the stat of the night with Syracuse winning in overtime yesterday. Teams in Big East tournament history who have won in overtime are 0 and 16 in their next game. Hey, Roberts flying to the rim. We've had enough history made here today. Yeah, right. We can stand a little more. <laughs> the lob inside, Daryl Watkins. Roberts in the paint get, get a handle on it. Nichols will save it, but into the backcourt, and that'll be an over and back on the orange. Well, again, a concerted effort to try to get it into the big people in the front line, as we mentioned. Get them involved early. That's the best motivator to get your big guys to rebound, to run, and remain active. Hall of Famer Jim Beheim in his 30th season as head coach of the Orange says that the win over Connecticut yesterday was one of the very best wins the program has had in his 44 years at Syracuse as a player, assistant coach, or head coach. And against the 2 3 zone, keep an eye on 32. Jeff Green below the free throw line in the short corner. His job is to read the defense. He carved them up last time as a scorer and as a passer. Hibbert, the big guy, a pretty good passer as well. Bowman misses the three. Nobody's on Hibbert underneath, but then the ball is knocked out of bounds. Well, Georgetown will focus on weak side rebounding. The last time these two teams met, Georgetown was plus 10 on the rebounding side. And they also went to the line 24 times versus only nine for Syracuse. So they were much more aggressive to the basket. You saw John Thompson nice. the third oh. behind the back nice pass. Block. And Hibbert has blocked Watkins, who has now 95 blocks on the season. Got him. McNamara pulls up for three. Roberts misses the follow slam. Ball still in play here as Devendorf comes up with it. A fresh clock for the Orange. McNamara on the drive Watkins the extra pass into Roberts and he's blocked from behind by Green. Looks like Len is going to be one of those nothing easy around the rim nights for both teams. Well the general adrenaline definitely flowing for both of them. Now underneath we talk about interior passing by Syracuse Georgetown doing a nice job Bowman behind the back nice pass but an even nicer block. And then inside. Georgetown doing the same thing protecting that goal and both teams with long athletic frontline players who have the ability to block shots and intimidate the 12th time these two teams have met in Big East tournament history Georgetown leading a six to five Georgetown has won six Big East championships but the last one was in 1989 Syracuse has won four and they're the defending champs a turnover by McNamara. Ashanti Cook unguarded decides to pull it out and Georgetown is deliberate offensively lots of passing lots of touches and they'll use a lot of the clock. Jim Beheim going to his bench early as Josh Wright is going to come in very proud he says of this particular group of players and as McNamara comes out very early let's take note of that remember McNamara is suffering from a slight groin strain and he took himself out a couple of times yesterday just for a minute here a minute there and that groin is a concern right now and we'll monitor McNamara's minutes this is an early substitution for Syracuse. Green the cross court pass and they don't get the shot off in time. Well it's such a thing as being too deliberate and Georgetown had a couple of looks. You know they have an idea of where they want to work the ball. Syracuse doing a much better job now of closing off Green in those sweet spots. And you've got to be able to at least have a mind of plan B. 
you can't get it where you want it. You got to improvise and Georgetown didn't do it on that possession. And Syracuse clearly a much different team than they were just a couple of weeks ago when they were not playing well at all. They played some of their best basketball of the year here in New York. Roberts leaves the jumper short and almost three minutes in we are still scoreless. And there's a block on Josh Wright. Who's got to be careful with the fouls tonight depending on McNamara's health he may play a lot of minutes. Well again looking you extend that defense right wants to keep Georgetown once they get below the free throw line extended you want to keep them down there set up the double teams in the corner. Let Matt Gorman has checked into the game and now for Terrence Roberts for Syracuse Jim Beheim may not have liked that 18 foot jump shot that Roberts tried last time down the floor. Hibbert there's the extra pass Wallace open for three and Georgetown strikes first. Well, Jonathan Wallace had that tremendous arc on his shot kind of reminiscent of Quincy Doobie. You get it up there high enough it decompresses. <laughs> Wallace 43 percent from beyond the arc on the season. Uh, Devendorf trying to shake Cook 15 on the shot clock. Boy that's good defense right there. Cook never allowed Devendorf to turn the corner. Nichols a long three. Rebound Georgetown the Hoyas allowing fewer than 60 points per game on the season and then the pass off the fingertips of Green out of bounds. Well for Georgetown it's all about tempo control and defense that's where it starts and they maximize their possessions on the other end and very precise in executing their offense. Lane is this uh, our alarm bells going off right now for Syracuse fans Jerry McNamara just doesn't sit down two minutes into a game if nothing's wrong. We know that the groin has been a problem and now Josh Wright his replacement turns it over and is Syracuse in a little early trouble here. Yeah you'd have to say that they are again I think even psychologically McNamara's teammates knowing what he's done in the first two games see him sitting on the bench for a long period of time they've got to start wondering and the more Josh Wright fumbles the and more despondent these guys are going to become a travel is the call so McNamara on the bench right struggling in his place five nothing Hoyas. ESPN's exclusive presentation of Championship Week is presented by 7-Up. If you want 100% natural lemon and lime flavors, the only way to go is up. The Hoyas up five early on Syracuse here in New York City. Big East semifinals. 5-0 Georgetown, 4-18 into this game. Quite a week for Syracuse. Just over a week ago, blown out by 39 at DePaul. One of the ugliest losses in the Jim Beheim era. As head coach at Syracuse and at that point a lot of observers said you know what they're done they're out they're not going to make it. And then on senior day Sunday Jerry McNamara's senior day they lost to Villanova no shame in that. They come to the Big East championship as a number nine seed to play in the eight nine game against Cincinnati Jerry McNamara with a game winning three with less than a second to go. And then yesterday McNamara's three forces overtime and Syracuse defeats number one UConn to advance to the semis also in the past week. A walk on in the Syracuse program named Todd Burak was came down with a sudden case of appendicitis and had to undergo an emergency appendectomy. Gee I wonder what that's like. <laughs> <laughs> well I can tell you but this is that's not about me. Figured, uh... Six days ago this was on Saturday and he said to the doctor doc do what you have to do but you're getting me out of the hospital tomorrow. I am not missing Jerry McNamara's senior day. And I don't know how the young man got out of the hospital less than 24 hours later because I sure didn't. But Burak was there for McNamara's senior day. Josh Wright fouled hard by Jeff Green, and all of his teammates help him up as Syracuse looks to get on the board. There's Mr. Burak in street clothes tonight, just six days after the operation, not ready to play. Had his appendix removed last Saturday, and uh, looking like a coach though. He looks fine. Either that, or he belongs on Wall Street. So good for him that he was. He said he was barely able to walk but he was there senior day at the Carrier Dome. Now Josh Wright is still in the game. Jerry McNamara is still on the bench. If you missed the first couple of minutes of the game McNamara started played a couple of minutes but then either took himself out or was taken out that we don't know. But as we mentioned off the top of the show and as you may have read or heard earlier today McNamara is suffering from a slight groin injury. They knew coming to New York they weren't safe yet. They probably had to beat Cincinnati. They did. 
the win over UConn certainly cements a bid for Syracuse so we don't know it's conjecture are they being a little bit more cautious or has De Bruyne acted up a little bit more than it did the last couple of days. Well I'd say it's got to be a case of both but you know obviously you never leave anything to chance and until your name is called on Sunday you know you want to continue to play to win and these Syracuse guys it's all about winning the Big East championship you play in this conference all season. So you're looking to reap the benefits but again Syracuse doing a nice job defensively without McNamara they have to tighten up defensively and Josh Wright's going to have to give him a little confidence at the point guard position. Devendorf the kick Nichols a good shooter hits a three first field goal of the game for the orange and they're down by one and they also have to be very unselfish which they were on that possession. Excellent ball movement inside out east west and good movement without it. Len Nichols went through a big shooting slump a few weeks ago but the last couple of games he along with everybody else has really been carrying his weight offensively for Syracuse. They have become as balanced as Georgetown has been all season long. And look at the adjustment against Jeff Green. The zone collapses on him when he's around that free throw line area. Oh nice look. Boy, Boy, back door cut by the guard and Green finds Wallace for the basket and that's where Green can really hurt you. That's what we said at the beginning of the telecast. Jeff Green so adept at reading defenses and finding people. Green just a sophomore second team all Big East along with the big guy in the middle Roy Hibbert. Devendorf snakes his way inside and Hibbert altered if not deflected that shot. And again if it's not there early as they try to thread the needle on the baseline that pass is knocked away. Devendorf the quick pull up for three. And the biggest guy of them all you can't teach height. And Roy Hibbert comes down with a rebound. And boy, that is such a weapon to be able to rebound like that to limit a team one and out. And as we mentioned, the last time these two teams met, Georgetown plus 10 on the boards. And had 17 offensive rebounds. Easier to rebound at the offensive end against the zone. Hibbert, a very close interior pass to Green. The extra pass out to Bowman for three and that is what Georgetown basketball has become. This isn't Big John Thompson's basketball anymore. This is JT three from Princeton his kind of basketball and Jim Beheim is screaming mad at one of the officials John Powell right now. Gorman inside missed a little jump hook Green has the rebound once again one and out. Better looks and you got it now in this kind of situation start going to your more accomplished offensive players like Devendorf and Nichols. Green misses the elbow jumper but another offensive rebound for the Hoyas. Look at these extra passes. Nice job continued penetration and kicking and another extra pass Bowman finds Cook and this is some pretty basketball being played by the Hoyas right now. Oh they're doing a tremendous job of finding gaps in that zone and then finding shooters. Eight point lead for the Hoyas early here in New York. The Hoyas having their way with Syracuse early here tonight. Beautiful passing, high percentage shots, 12 to 4 Georgetown right now as Jerry McNamara re enters the game. Played the first couple of minutes, then sat down for about six minutes, but now has come back in alongside Josh Wright as Devendorf is the player to come out. McNamara's had a sensational couple of days, a couple of huge threes, a career high 13 assists yesterday in the win over UConn. He's been the biggest story so far in this tournament. And he's back in, obviously, to help generate some offense right now. Syracuse stuck on four. And really, offense seems to be disjointed. Brandon Bowman reaches in and commits the foul. So we'll step aside as we show you some great ball movement. All basketball fans have to appreciate this kind of thing. Georgetown making it look easy so far early against the Orange. Georgetown with a nice eight point lead over Syracuse uh, early in this game here in New York. Time now for ESPNU's Pride of the Program. And in the spotlight tonight, UMBC. Local bragging rights and college hoops go a long way. And between 2000 and 2003, UMBC had plenty to brag about. 
besting local rivals Towson, Loyola, Coppin State, and Morgan State to win the Battle of Baltimore four straight years. And more pride available on mobile ESPN. Well, Georgetown playing with some pride so far here tonight, playing with some unselfishness, Len, which has been one of their trademarks this year. Well, it's all about ball movement for Georgetown. We talked about precise execution. Jeff Green from the high post just pinpoint accuracy and even Roy Hibbert gets in to the act with tight interior passing goes back outside you know you penetrate the gaps and you're always looking for the guy with the better shot when you play in this Georgetown offense and again that's what John Thompson the third has brought to this program that unselfishness a graduate of Princeton the former head coach at Princeton where he led that program to a couple of NCAA berths and they run what they call a modified Princeton offense. One of the modifications is they have sensational athletes, so you can really do some different things. But a guy like Jeff Green, a good passing big man, everything flows through him. Demetrius Nichols with the elbow jumper, 12-6. Well, again, you talk about the Georgetown passing. They average 15 assists a game on 24 field goals a game, which is about 62-63%. Now by contrast West Virginia probably the most unselfish team the best passing team in the Big East averages an assist on about 70 percent of their field goals so Georgetown in pretty good company yeah. another illustration of how well they pass they lead the Big East in field goal percentage that's because they get so many layups and high percentage looks after all this passing look at that shot boy I like when guys have the high arc he didn't make that one but he gives himself a chance to let it go in and he get a shooter's roll when it hits the rim. McNamara penetrates and a good help. Wallace with a steal. Bowman one on two and is fouled. Boy, it's six nine and lots of length. Bowman can get up and down the floor like a gazelle. And then that's another illustration of the modification of the Princeton offense. <laughs> when you get a chance to get out and run and you got guys like Brendan Bowman, you know, you want to run. You don't want to hold back. Yep. Don't pull the reins back. Bowman, the second leading scorer on the team at 11 and a half points per game. There are six Hoyas averaging between 8 and 12 points per game. And that's why John Thompson, the third, says, I've really got six starters. Daryl Owens, who's in the game now, gets starters' minutes coming off the bench. And in that top six, three seniors and three sophomores in the two classes working together well, just as father and son are working together well. Big John is in the house. John Thompson Jr., who another Hall of Famer, and of course, so much success as head coach at Georgetown. And now John Thompson the third bringing them back. The Hoyas heading Ooh, to the NCAA like carry. carry. That did, but Daryl Watkins gets away with it. Nice move by Watkins, though. Very assertive, just like he hesitated with the ball up in the air. And that probably gave him an advantage to get head and shoulders past Green. Len, he's a junior, and of all the games he's played, two of his three highest scoring games have come the last two days here in this tournament. Watkins had 15 against Cincinnati and 14 against Connecticut. Well, a part of that is because Jerry McNamara on the fast break in penetration has delivered it to him where he can use it, and that builds your confidence. A lot of those moves that Watkins makes and is successful with but hadn't been before is because of a lack of confidence, a lack of repetition. Daryl Owens with a three. Georgetown not running the full Princeton package because Syracuse plays his own, but we still see when they can pass it, they can shoot it, and they are very crisp right now. Well, philosophically, they're running it because that's what it's about. Diversity, ball movement. Louis McCroskey throws it away. Back come the Hoyas. Oh, nice pick. And, nice pick. And right there. Foul by Bowman as McCroskey takes it right back away from him. Now the Big East Championship presented by Aeropostal continues after this game at 9 o'clock Eastern tonight here at the Garden. The number two team in the nation, the Villanova Wildcats, will take on the Pittsburgh Panthers. What a battle that should be. The Big East Championship presented by Aeropostal also available in high definition on ESPN HD. Pittsburgh and Villanova did not play during the regular season. The new expanded Big East. You don't play every single team. You miss a couple of them. And Villanova and Pittsburgh didn't meet during the regular season. McNamara gets all the way to the rim. His first two of the night. And really surprisingly never really met with any resistance in the paint. And maybe that was out of respect for his passing ability. What he was able to do yesterday against UConn. UConn stepped up to help. He found Watkins on Nichols. 
or Roberts along the baseline. McNamara had 10 of those 13 assists yesterday in the first half as Syracuse roared out to a double digit lead. Bowman is fouled by McCroskey. You take a look at McNamara, slow his man down, and then use that screen curl, and nobody really steps up. You got a shot blocker in Roy Hibbert there, and Hibbert was kind of frozen, sticking with his man. And again, that's uh, out of respect for McNamara's passing ability. Brandon Bowman saying that should be a shooting foul. It doesn't appear right now that the officials agree. And now Bowman's going to come out of Green's going to come in. They're going to give Georgetown the ball on the end line. And John Thompson, the third, is saying he was in the act of shooting. He was going up to the rim. Jesse Sapp with the ball, a freshman out of New York City. He's the seventh man, not a very deep Georgetown team. They rarely go deeper than seven. Look at this pass. Green inside to Hibbert. Jeff Green makes so many things happen. And he gets it in that sweet spot again, right below the free throw line. And you read the middle guy. Middle guy comes up on you, you can drive around him, or you can throw it by him. And you also need good hands underneath, and Hibbert has really exhibited good hands down low. Even Dorf off with the three. Green's one of these guys can have a great game, even, even if he doesn't score a point, and he hasn't scored. Look at those oh, hands man. to keep that ball in bounds. Now Syracuse with a chance to run three on two. McCroskey from Devendorf. Well, Syracuse needs some easy baskets right here. You know, the opportunity to extend the zone, to be able to get their hands on a few and get out in transition. Takes a lot of pressure off their half court. High screen from Sapp to try to free up Cook. Syracuse has been in the 2 3 the entire game. They do come out of it once in a while, but it is still the staple of their defense. The three from the corner. Green follows his own miss. Hibbert comes up with a loose ball. And McCroskey somewhat inadvertently commits his second foul. Georgetown leading by seven. Time now for a Sports Center 30 at 30 update. Here's Reese Davis. We often hear me refer to the sweet spot against the 2 3 zone, and that's right here below the line. Watch Jeff Green come into that space. And once he gets there, his job really is to turn and read this guy and read the weak side. You have a guy that's open right underneath. He's going to turn, read, and he beats the defender before he gets there, and Roy Hibbert does the rest. You need a guy in that sweet spot who is adept at hitting that shot if the middle guy doesn't come up on him and who's able to pass the ball with accuracy if he does come up. And it's, I guess, an added bonus, Len, that that guy's six foot nine. Jeff Green can see over a lot of defenders that a lot of guys who tend to go to that sweet spot might not be able to. Absolutely, and that's why you see Georgetown either have Hibbert or Green in that position using their size to look over the defense. Again, the extra pass. Green pulls up from the elbow, knew he missed it, so he follows it aggressively, and another offensive rebound for the Hoyas. Boy, so smart, so athletic. It's a tough combination yep. to play against. And again, even though Green is not scoring tonight, he is doing so many other things. The guy who is scoring is Jonathan Wallace. He's got eight. Well, Georgetown just feasting off of second chance opportunities and getting the ball inside. We talked about precise execution. That's what they're all about. McCroskey on the drive all the way to the rim. Second bucket of the night for McCroskey, who actually left the team for a week about five weeks ago after a dispute over playing time following a game against Rutgers. Didn't like his lack of minutes, got really upset, took some time off, missed a game. And has evidently come back with a better attitude. Daryl Owens knocks down a long range jumper, his second three. Well, again, Louis McCroskey, very talented, just needs to understand where the opportunities come. I think that's where he had his difficulty. So concerned about shooting jumpers instead of becoming a basketball player. 
Let's bring in Mark Jones with more. Yeah, guys, when he left the team for that week, he ended up coming back and playing a game here against St. John's at Madison Square Garden. He didn't think he was going to play. It was so bad he told his parents not even to come to the game to watch. But surprisingly, he got into that contest and realized that maybe it was about time to turn the corner saying, I'm thankful that Coach is the way he is and that he let me redeem myself and that the team let me redeem myself, which he seems to be doing, guys. Yeah, that's you. All right, Mark, thank you. Sounds like a lesson learned by McCroskey, who's a junior and started the first five games of the season then lost his starting job to Eric Devendorf and obviously as the minutes dwindled struggled with that but Jim Beheim gave the young man another opportunity and that's Jim Beheim. I mean all he cares about is his kids and their development and he knows that Louis McCroskey is young and that was an immature thing to do and again I guess as you move on in this career you start to understand what a little kindness can do it's brought out the best of McCroskey thus far. Hibbert baseline just too big. Well too big but also excellent footwork. Again you see Hibbert set up in that zone. He was fouled on the last one because he made a couple of titanic moves that got everybody off their feet. Demetrius Nichols a little bit too deep. He's had the hot hand but that one was way out there. Syracuse down 10 to Georgetown in the first of two Big East semifinals tonight here on ESPN. Hibbert trying to back down Watkins a great shot blocker. And three seconds is the call on the Hoyas. Well, that time Syracuse obviously looking to double and triple and force Hibbert to give it up. And Hibbert just took a little bit of time to find people. And if you draw John Thompson the third, you don't really mind that because you know what his intentions were. And these two teams trying to get to the championship game tomorrow night. The Big East Championship presented by Aeropostal, 8 o'clock Eastern tomorrow night. Right here on ESPN from the garden the orange trying to defend their title from a year ago and if Daryl Watkins keeps playing like that they've got a shot and also if Jerry McNamara keeps penetrating and that's what it's all about that looks like the Syracuse against UConn McNamara penetrating forcing the help and then finding his bigs Jerry McNamara by the end of the night will probably pass Pearl Washington for third on Syracuse's assist list and will pass Hakeem Warwick for fourth on their scoring list. Devendorf steps into the three. The Hoya bench wanted to travel, but they've got the ball back anyway. And I'm not so sure if I'm Jerry. I know you want to distribute the ball, but I would go at what's working for me. And rather than pull up and give a guy a shot to take the three, I'd continue to penetrate, get my big guys involved, maybe get the big guys for Georgetown a little bit of foul trouble. Devendorf 0 for 4 from the floor tonight. Green steps in and draws the foul. We will step aside. It's an eight point lead for the Hoyas trying to make a name for themselves and get to the championship game. Let's go. All right, Dave, thank you very much. Uh, one of the greats, one of the all time great guards in Syracuse history, Pearl Washington, is in the house tonight. They were Orangemen when he played. They're the Orange now. As Pearl looks on D.C., Derek Coleman is in the house. Until last night, he had played more minutes as a Syracuse player than anybody in their history. Jerry McNamara now holds that distinction. Some great players who have played under Jim Beheim in his 30 years as head coach at Syracuse. By the way, they have changed that last foul. They called it on Demetrius Nichols. It has been changed and rightly so as we looked at a replay during the break to Louis McCroskey. It's McCroskey's third instead of Nichols third. But Nichols probably a more valuable performer a bigger score so Syracuse wanted to set the record straight McCroskey now with three Nichols with two. You know this is a point in time again Jerry McNamara looks as though he's not suffering from that groin twins he's got to get a little bit more involved here shot clock runs down if in fact he gets to that point it's got to be him and not Devendorf Devendorf with a travel Jim Beheim's going to take him out of the game going to take somebody out of the game as Nichols it's Devendorf yeah Nichols coming to back in and again that leaves McNamara now to run the point oh, McCroskey. It's, McCroskey. You know, it's McCroskey is going out and I saw Nichols point to Devendorf. Yeah, it looked like it. And maybe Jim Beheim changed his mind. McCroskey getting the business end of a Beheim lecture. 
right now on the bench. Let's go to Mark Jones. Yeah, guys, uh, you guys were mentioning Derek Coleman a few moments ago. I asked him about his favorite moment in this tournament. He says he goes back to a game against Pittsburgh when he blocked a Ryan Shorter dunk, which led to a Syracuse victory as Georgetown knocks down another shot. I asked him about his head coach, Jim Beheim. He said that, you know, they retired my jersey just a few weeks ago, and I'm still thanking the same wonderful people that were here when I was here at Syracuse. And by the way, he bought his coach, Beheim, a Rolex watch for his induction to the Hall of Fame and got one for Bernie Fine for this tournament, guys. They're sporting some nice jewelry. Very I nice. do. Well, uh, Bernie Fine works with the big guys and has for a long, long time. He's been alongside Jim Beheim up at Syracuse. They have been a great tandem, the associate head coach of the Orange. See, Bernie had to do a little study, and he looked like he was a point guard in his day. <laughs> He had to study those big man tapes. Devendorf left hand. And he's taken some questionable shots here tonight. Georgetown out to their largest lead of the night as we move into the last couple of minutes shortly of the first half. Josh Wright will check in at the next opportunity, and this time you can be sure it's Devendorf who's coming out. Well, the reason is Devendorf on penetration, he's looking for hits. He's not looking to create for other guys. And yes, he's a scorer, but at this point in time, Syracuse has got to get their front line involved. Double team on Hibbert. It forces a turnover. McNamara the look ahead to Devendorf. And he will shoot a couple of free throws. Well, again, in transition. Steals out of the zone. Syracuse very good at running the floor. And Devendorf got out in front of everybody. Devendorf, a very talented freshman, actually picked by Big East coaches preseason to be the rookie of the year in the Big East an honor that went to Dominic James of Marquette and deservedly so during the season McNamara sits down and a look of frustration on his face McCroskey getting set to check back in and he'll come in and now Devendorf will come out so Jim Beheim shuttling his guards in and out well again it's also a recognition that this is the third game in three nights and you know his guys obviously with that monumental win against UConn they're obviously going to be a bit tired and recognizing that this may come down to the last five eight minutes of this game he wants to make sure he's got some fresh legs down the stretch in the second half both of these teams playing for the third time in as many nights as will Pittsburgh later on the higher seed lost three of the four games yesterday in the quarterfinals again look at the passing. The floater by oh, Wallace. That is just amazing. They have spread the zone with their passing, spread it so wide that the middle is like a vault at a big bank, man. All you got to do is just walk in and cash in. Len, 12 field goals, 10 assists tonight for the Hoyas. McCroskey in there with the big fellas. And it's turned over. That was nice anticipation by Cook to get down to the baseline. And again, Georgetown a very deliberate, a much different style than they played under Big John Thompson. This team first in the Big East in field goal percentage, second last in offensive rebounding. Back in the day, their offense was throw it up on the rim and go get it. <laughs> Timeout, JT3. Right. Well, take us through this ball movement, Len. Well, again, it comes down to just getting it back on the perimeter. The little bit of penetration forces the defense to kind of extend the diagonal passes to the point where, again, look how extended the zone is. And Wallace just walks right into the middle with nobody impeding his progress. Just terrific ball movement that stretched this zone to its limits. Georgetown coming off a four point win over Notre Dame then a three point win over Marquette. They are the number five seed in this tournament. Syracuse the number nine seed. They're trying to get to the final just like Pittsburgh and Villanova will in our next game at nine Eastern right here on ESPN. The Big East Championship semifinal number two presented by Aero Postal. Villanova held a one point lead last night over Rutgers at halftime. One by 32 points. Pittsburgh gets full marks for coming back from a double digit deficit against West Virginia to earn a trip into the semifinals. I'll tell you, both of those teams hunger, desire, hustle, 
You know, one is a little bit smoother, but the other gets the job done with scrappiness. And we're talking about Villanova and Pittsburgh, respectively. Shot clock turned off. The Orange could hold for the final shot. McNamara on the bench. Josh Rank, the quarterback right now for the Orange, into the final 10 seconds. And a lob inside for Nichols, who wasn't looking. He was setting a screen to try and free up Watkins. And Roberts tried to throw a pass into Nichols, who wasn't expecting it. Well, you blame it on the passer. You should never pass the ball to a teammate that's not looking at you. You got to be able to see at least his eyes, or really, you see the numbers on the front of his jersey. Five seconds. Cook's going to get a look. And buries a three in the final second. What a great first 20 minutes of basketball for the Georgetown Hoyas. And what a frustrating first half for Jim Beheim and the Syracuse Orange. They made it look easy, Len. Well, they certainly did. Again, it's the unselfishness. Terrence Roberts getting there late as he walked off. Jim Beheim had a few words for him, wondering where he was at that particular point in time. Guys got the ball with a wide open jumper. Georgetown, is seven first half threes and 13 attempts, a 15 point lead on the Orange as we send it to Mark Jones with John Thompson. Coach, 11 assists on 13 field goals. What's been the key to your offensive efficiency here in the first half? Uh, well, well, they're in the zone, so we have to, to bip it around a little bit. Now, guys have done a good job of, of passing the ball around. We have to make sure we stop their transition. They're getting too many easy looks in transition. You've been able to keep Jerry McNamara in check. How? I don't know and he, you're not going to be able to do that for 40 minutes. He's too good of a player. He, he's too determined. So we've been fortunate this first half but we still have to stay focused on him because he can and has exploded in the past. Thanks a lot coach. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. Back to you guys. All right Mark. Thank you very much. An impressive first half for the Georgetown Hoyas. They're up by 15. It is time now for the seven up halftime report. Let's go back to the studio. Dave Revson and Tom Brennan. Everybody's going to remember the name Jerry McNamara after what he's done the first couple of games in this tournament. But right now, nobody on Syracuse is really lighting it up. Georgetown with a 15 point lead, shooting the ball very well, passing the ball beautifully. Syracuse really struggling. Len Elmore's going to show you some good things Georgetown's done at both ends of the floor. Well, this is a clinic in ball movement against the zone, inside out, east west. And that's really resulted in some wide open looks, particularly for the guard. Syracuse, after Jeff Green in the first game had 18 points, decided they were going to adjust and try to cover Green and collapse a little bit. But obviously open looks for the guards. And defensively, just doing a nice job on Jerry McNamara, really playing him physically now, not allowing him many opportunities to come off the screens. That's kind of frustrating, McNamara. I expect Syracuse really to start going man to man. You take a look at what McNamara's done today after the first two games and he's been bothered obviously by the groin injury but also by the defense of Georgetown Syracuse has got to go man right now even though they're playing zone Georgetown just too comfortable against that zone moving the ball at will McNamara for those who weren't with us missed eight minutes in the first half sat down for a six minute stretch early and then the last two minutes of the half so he played only 12 of the 20 minutes after playing 80 of 85 minutes in their first two games here in New York. Shot clock under 10. Not a problem for Georgetown and not something they are unaccustomed to. It'll be Cook. And he got it up off the rim. And a travel was called. Took an extra step before he got up in the air. Let's go to Mark Jones. Well, Lenny, you talked about Syracuse going into a man-to-man -man defense. And I spoke with their coaches during the halftime break. They said that they weren't happy with their success or lack thereof in the man defense. They have to be more active in the zone and give up much fewer than the seven threes they gave up in the first half. Offensively, meanwhile, they talked about being more patient and looking for a good first five minutes here. They want to get the lead to at least down to 10 points with 10 minutes to go in the game. That's the goal. Back to you guys. Well, I'll tell you what, if they don't go man, Georgetown with this comfort level, they continue to stretch the defense and to a point the ball movement so good that the zone loses its form and creates opportunity. Three second to call on Georgetown so back to back turnovers the other problem about trying to make up a deficit against the Hoyas 
is the game is shortened because their possessions tend to run exactly. pretty much close to 35 seconds because they use the clock with all those passes. And the way you shake that obviously is you got to get up and play man and you got to really pressure the ball and not sit back. And you'd expect Syracuse to learn that against Vermont in the tournament last year. They had a difficult time coming back because they never did come out and pressure and extend. Coach Brennan back in the studio smiling right now I would think of the memory <laughs> that you just provided. Uh, Tommy deserves that one. <laughs> that was one of the most more terrific triumphs of underdogs in that tournament history. McNamara a deep three. And it'll go out of bounds to the Hoyas. Syracuse looked very good offensively at times against Cincinnati and Connecticut. They have looked anything but. And in the regular season meeting just a couple of weeks ago with Georgetown, Syracuse scored only 53 points. McNamara was held to eight. And Georgetown smothered the Orange much like they are here tonight. Now we talked about the assists. And at the half, 11 assists on 13 field goals for Georgetown. They only had nine total against Marquette yesterday. And a lot of that was because Marquette played an awful lot of man to man and forced one on one situations. And Jim Beheim will come out of the zone if he feels it's necessary. He'll even extend three quarter full court pressure every now and again if he feels it's necessary. But it hasn't happened yet here tonight. Well, three straight trips now. Georgetown come up empty and. Maybe Jim Beheim knows what he's talking about. He's only in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> Nichols uh, off a screen. It misses the floater in the lane. And again, Georgetown deliberate. They'll reset, use the clock, pass it around, and look for a high percentage shot. The Hoyas have not won the Big East Championship since 1989. They haven't even been to the final since 1996. Hard to believe the last time the Hoyas were in the Big East Tournament final, Allen Iverson was a member of the team. That guy, of course, was stalking the sideline. You remember that monumental game, Iverson against Ray Allen in the championship? There's a new sheriff in town. That's really what it's all about. He brought a new philosophy and brought in his type of players. Six time tournament champs, all of them won in the first 10 years of the Big East Championship. Six times with UConn for the most. Georgetown will be going to the NCAA tournament this year. They haven't done that in five years. So, in many respects, this is the best year Georgetown has had in five or six years. The man never relaxes. Big John. Big John. Arms crossed. You know, neither does Jim Beheim, neither does Jim Calhoun. The great ones don't know how to relax. That's part of what makes them great. Always on guard. Well, we had a long drought at the beginning of the game before either team scored over three minutes. Nobody has scored yet here in the second half. That's one pass too many. Matt Gorman has checked in here early in the second half for Syracuse as he did in the first half again for Roberts. A three for McNamara. And McNamara's band and the rest of the Syracuse fans coming to life a little bit here in the garden. And again, Georgetown may be overpassing a bit. Guys getting the ball in the paint, not willing to power up. Instead, looking for another pass. And that leads, obviously, to Syracuse in transition. And when they're in transition, they're very good. Devendorf. And a good start here, a 5 0 run in the last minute for Syracuse to cut it down to 10. First points of the night for Eric Devendorf and again the building louder now than it's been at any point tonight. There are more Syracuse fans here in New York than there are Georgetown fans it would appear. Hibbert the extra pass to Green. Owens right back into Hibbert right back to Green. And a block by Matt Gorman. And a foul committed by the Hoyas it'll be Hibbert. Again, we talk about Syracuse in transition, creating turnovers, getting rebounds, and this is what really spreads defenses right there. McNamara's ability to hit the three in transition, and then the next time down, Devendorf, much better at slashing to the basket. Four minutes in, Georgetown hasn't scored this half. Syracuse has cut a 15-point halftime deficit down to 10. Devendorf, little back door to McNamara, extra pass to Watkins. And he's fouled Syracuse taking a page out of the Georgetown playbook right there. 
We're headed to a break as the Orange have cut it down to 10 here with the Garden. We will have a championship week update when we come back. All right, Dave, thank you. How about earlier today, Wake Forest with a, a win over North Carolina State to advance to the semifinals of the ACC. They've got a date with top ranked Duke, or top seeded, number one seeded Duke. Tomorrow, Wake Forest winning two games in the tournament already. Here in New York at the Big East Championship, teams who have won in overtime, as Syracuse did yesterday, have never, and I mean never, won the next game. They're 0 and 16. Well, I tell you, a lot of people might think that it's obviously. Uh, physically draining an extra five minutes does take something out of you but I think it's more the emotional drain. Well he missed the free throws but he got the dunk so it all comes out of the wash I guess. Daryl Watkins with six Syracuse within eight a 7 0 run here in the second half and a little bit of breakdown now by Georgetown not scoring on one end and then not doing the little things on the other and blocking out. We got to find a way to kind of pull it back together. Bowman right now in the middle of the zone. Hibbert is not in the game right now. Green is down on the baseline, so it's not a huge Georgetown lineup. Green steps up to the free throw line and knocks down the jumper. And he steps up, no question about it, in a need situation. And again, we talk about Jeff Green and his ability on that sweet spot, particularly around the free throw line, can hit that jumper, can find people down low. That's his first field goal of the night. He had 18 points in the win over Syracuse a couple of weeks ago. Nowhere to go for Devendorf. Good job by Wallace to keep Devendorf again from turning the corner going to his left. McNamara being defended by Ashanti Cook who guarded him for the most part in that win by Georgetown a couple of weeks ago and for the most part shut him down. Watkins no rebound Wallace. And Watkins on that roll he's got to go all the way to the basket. That's his job. He can elevate over guys and draw fouls not settle for the jumper. Darrell Owens gets the open look. Tipped by Gorman, but nice. right out to Wallace. No look to Bowman for the slam. Oh, that's playing together, folks. Intentionally tipping it out to your teammate who already sized up the situation with Bowman down low. McNamara, no look to Gorman for the slam. The answer by the Orange. Right, Matt Gorman getting some big minutes tonight. Right back at you, Jerry McNamara once again. He knew exactly where everybody was on the floor. And that assist lend ties Jerry McNamara with Pearl Washington, who you just saw for third on Syracuse's all time list. And again, McNamara could pass Hakeem Warwick tonight for fourth on the scoring list. Needs only three more points. Number one is in the house. Lawrence Moten said hello at halftime. Syracuse's all time leading scorer. Here's Bowman. Old school, huh? Lefty and righty. We saw him with a terrific lefty hook a game or two ago, and now right handed. Very fundamentally sound, and you obviously need that playing against a savvy defense like the Syracuse 2 3. And great balance scoring by the Hoyas, as always. Eric Devendorf with a long two. Four on the night for Devendorf. Syracuse has it down to 10. You heard Mark Jones say one of their goals was to get it inside 10 with 10 minutes to go. They're there now. If they can keep their momentum going, they're playing much better now than they did in the first half. That's oh, tough, man. though. That's <laughs> tough. Bowman on the baseline. Hey, you talk about smooth as creamery butter. They've got some talent, folks. Number five seed coming in, ranked 23rd in the nation, 21 and 8 on the year. Nichols the pull up, little strong. Gorman the rebound. Well, Gorman him giving him big lift. McNamara giving him a lift. His three moves him past Hakeem Warwick, as mentioned, into fourth on the all-time scoring list, and more importantly, gets it under 10. And when you have that ability to hit that quick three, Gorman on the offensive rebound kicked it to McNamara immediately. Defense never able to set. Gorman out of Watertown, New York, giving Jim Beheim some good minutes. That will go to the arrow, which will give it to Syracuse. As the pendulum feels like it's starting to swing toward Syracuse. And Jerry McNamara right in the middle of it, creating for others. And then they reciprocate. Could McNamara be back to form? We'll see.
Dave, thank you. Looking on and getting ready for his game tonight on the right. The Big East Player of the Year, Randy Foy. Villanova and Pittsburgh coming up in our second semifinal tonight. The Big East Championship presented by Aero Postal from Madison Square Garden. Villanova and Pittsburgh should be great, and this one is getting closer and closer. Syracuse down 15 at the break, down nine right now. Jerry McNamara just hit a three. And the Orange with a spark here. Remember, they're the defending Big East Tournament champions. Defeated West Virginia in the final last year. McNamara, another clean look, left it a little short. Well, again, better execution by Syracuse in their half court, giving McNamara an opportunity to come off that screen. Curling, a quick hitter. And that's where he's most dangerous. We should remind folks no team in the Big East history has ever won the tournament having to play four games. Both of these teams. If one of them is going to get to the final and will play its fourth game tomorrow. Cook struggling for the basketball and got a timeout call. Well, you got to know which way the arrow's pointing. And the arrow's pointing in Georgetown's favor. So you fall on a loose ball, stay there, and let the officials call the hell ball instead of wasting the timeout. It is a timeout for the Hoyas. They're up by nine. We'll be back to the garden after this. As all college hoop fans know, a little bit earlier this week, Jim Beheim somewhat angrily came to the defense of Jerry McNamara after there was a column in the student newspaper in Syracuse and then an anonymous uh, poll of assistant coaches in the Big East in the city paper, the Post Standard, saying that McNamara is an overrated player. Of course, he has made shots to get them this far in both games here in the Big East tournament. You look at his all time ranks on the Syracuse list first in this, second in that, third in that, and uh, Jim Beheim has as much affection and respect for Jerry McNamara as any player he has coached at Syracuse. And he certainly should. I mean, obviously, you have to look at the big game situation where he's come alive. But if you look at his career shooting, a career 38% field goal shooter, 35% three point shooter, if you subscribe to the 40 60 rule, he's really shooting 52% from three. And in the end, you add that with his field goal shooting, he's shooting 45% and higher. <laughs> right on. And <here>. higher. <laughs> I have this vague memory of six threes in the first half of the national championship game against Kansas and a 43 point game of the tournament against BYU. And I mean, you got to look beyond the stats. People look at that under 40% in both field goal and three point field goal and think, well, that's not so good. I think Jim Beheim made the point. Where are they without him? Bowman is fouled from behind. I believe it is going to be Nichols. Jerry McNamara last time down the floor, another three, his 395th career three, sixth on the all time NCAA list. And so good at squaring up to receive the pass. His feet are ready. And so all he's got to do is catch and then the quick release. And it doesn't matter where he is on, on the floor. And quite honestly, it doesn't matter whether it's a pass or off the bounce. And that's what makes him so deadly, particularly close game situations. Obviously, that also is a tribute to fine conditioning. That last foul was on Demetrius Nichols, his third. Bowman knocks down the first. He's having a good game. Well, if you want to assess the value that McNamara has to Syracuse in the games against Cincinnati and Connecticut, was there any doubt who was going to have the ball and who was going to take the shot in the last second of each of those two games? He's feeling it. He's feeling it. Fourteen for McNamara. Twelve in the second half, and the Orange are back within four. And McNamara's band is now the loudest group here in this building, whether they're from Syracuse or Scranton or somewhere in between. Jeff Green and another offensive rebound for the Hoyas and that's how Georgetown is going to have to hold off Syracuse they're having some trouble scoring they've got to create extra opportunities for themselves put the pressure back on the defense the zone looks more active for the orange here in the second half blocked and 
Jeff Green with the bucket. John Thompson wants another timeout. Again, the Hoyas dominating around the rim, trying to offset what Jerry McNamara is doing for Syracuse. Well, McNamara is really utilizing the screens well. Here he is right here. Screen is coming down to be set. He's going to curl off, and if you watch, there's no help. There's the screen. He comes off. Nobody steps up to help Ashanti Cook. And he comes off wide too. It's almost a staggered screen. And he uses both guys. No one steps out. And you can expect Georgetown to start to adjust to that. But no one better and quicker than Jerry McNamara to curl and catch and shoot. This is the first of two semifinals from the Big East Championship presented by Aeropostal. We are here with the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden. The host of the Big East Championship for the 24th consecutive season with Len Elmore and Mark Jones. I'm Dan Schulman at Syracuse has gotten right back into this game on the strength of who else Jerry McNamara lighting it up from outside here in the second half. He knows his team's going to the NCAA tournament now but he'd like to defend the Big East tournament title that they won last year. Matt Gorman again getting good minutes and making good things happen. Well that time Georgetown just switched. Gorman came down the screen the man guarding him Bowman just stayed outside to take McNamara away but good look as far as deciding on options and getting it into Gorman because once you switch the guy who's setting the screen if he rolls back to the ball he's going to be open Gorman getting most of Terrence Roberts minutes here in this game tonight and Roberts has been terrific in the first couple of games in this tournament. 16 points nine rebounds against Cincinnati 16 points seven rebounds against Connecticut Roberts is scoreless tonight and sitting right beside his head coach and has been for quite a while and Jim Beheim is going to push Matt Gorman get as much as he can out of him but also having Roberts next to him allows Roberts to gain some perspective how is Gorman getting open what is he doing and if he can absorb that he'll be that much more effective when he gets on the floor Hibbert not in the game for Georgetown that steal by Nichols and a foul is called on Jesse Sapp who's hopping mad thinking he just deflected the ball out of bounds. Well John Thompson the third obviously doesn't agree and that looked like a basically a fumble Nichols brought it into the face of the defender. You know it wasn't a reach the ball was brought right into the face of the defender and knocked loose and it'll go not only as a foul but a shooting foul as Nichols was on his way up in the opinion of the officials so Demetrius Nichols heads to the line for two. Join us tomorrow night here on ESPN championship week presented by seven up it'll be the championship game from New York the Big East championship presented by Aeropostal the winner of this game against the winner of Villanova and Pittsburgh our second semifinal which can be seen following this one tonight right here on ESPN big night of basketball and as always it'll be a big loud Saturday night in the garden tomorrow it's a big loud Friday night right now <laughs> the Syracuse faithful have stepped up their noise and the few Georgetown folks here trying to make themselves heard urging their team let's try and score a little bit. Yesterday Syracuse had a big lead on Connecticut let it get away then won in overtime tonight Syracuse was down 15 at the half and they've roared back within three and the Hoyas continue to burn their timeouts. Well the reason for the comeback all begins with Jerry McNamara really giving his team a boost some quick hitters in transition a couple of times down they pushed it. And then obviously in the half court using staggered screens to get himself open. And again it really turns his team up it gets the amps up a little bit and these guys all start performing for him. You look at the tail of two halves first half McNamara took a lot of rest obviously to try to save himself for the second half hoping his team didn't get too far down in a hole where he couldn't he couldn't rescue them. And as much a constant as Jerry McNamara nailing freeze is his parents are here in the building tonight his dad Jerry his mom Joyce are here they come to every single game along with seemingly half a scrant for more <laughs> let's go to Mark Jones. Well because of the ticket situation Dan they weren't able to get half a Scranton in the building tonight but they did tell me before the game that in light of the controversy it may have come out a little bit of a little harsh in the way that coach Beheim defended their son but it said it made they said it made them feel very warm 
about where he is and the love that his coach has for him the way that he defended him very passionately back to you guys. All right Mark thank you Daryl Owens misses the three well one of the reasons McNamara went to Syracuse was to stay close enough to home so people could see him play and they have in droves as Daryl Watkins hustles down the floor follows up the miss and Syracuse is within a point in a game in which they have never led. Again Georgetown's jumpers just aren't falling they're gonna have to find a better way to unleash some offense they're able to get the ball in the sweet spots but then it comes down to making decisions from there. Hibbert is back in land green is on the bench right now let's see if they try to get the big guy involved there it is. And instead of the pass it's the jump hook. Well if you can spread the floor and get Hibbert in a one on one situation with Watkins you let Hibbert work. There's him that's McNamara off that pick. That ball was deflected out of bounds good call by Reggie Greenwood it'll stay with Syracuse as we go to immediate timeout. Georgetown by three over Syracuse. Time now for a Sports Center 30 at 30 update. Here's Dave Repson. ESPN's exclusive presentation of Championship Week is presented by 7 Up. If you want 100% natural lemon and lime flavors, the only way to go is up. Back here in New York, we got a game going right now. Syracuse has roared back into it. They've gotten within three of Georgetown, 734 to go here. In a semifinal matchup of the Big East Championship presented by Aero Postal. Let's go cross court and join Mark Jones. Yeah, guys, earlier today, interesting bit of news. The FBI nationally alerted national law enforcement officials to a recent internet posting regarding attacks aimed at college basketball arenas. Now, Greg Shaheen, the NCAA vice president, told ESPN.com a little bit earlier there had been no imminent threat, direct or specific, related to the NCAA championship. He also said, that the FBI and Department of Homeland Security asked the NCAA to revisit its security plans. Guys, back to you. All right, Mark. Uh, thank you. Unfortunately, uh, Len, a fact of life in the world in which we live these days, and hopefully, obviously, nothing behind it, but good to know. Thank you, Mark. It's all about vigilance. Can't give in to the yeah. threats, but we got to be vigilant. Matt Gorman. Matt Gorman. Syracuse has tied the game at 49. Well, you talk about getting some minutes out of Matt Gorman. Gorman averages about 10 minutes a game, only about three points a game. But he's come in and he's played big, and he's also stretched the defenses a little bit with that look. Hibbert inside. McNamara falls down trying to get out to the wing. And a foul going against Syracuse. I believe it's going to be Devendorf as we go back to the other end. And really, it's the activity of Jerry McNamara putting the ball on the floor, looking to penetrate, that froze the defense and allowed Gorman to step out uncontested. Syracuse all the way back from a 15 point halftime deficit to tie the game. And we've got another foul going against Syracuse, and it's Devendorf again, his second in about 10 seconds. Well, if you're Georgetown, you know, this is a good start to climb back into the lead, putting pressure on the defense by ball dribble penetration. Great interior passing, and look at the emotion on the big fella Hibbert, who fed Green down on the baseline. Hey, both of these teams understand the opportunity in front of them. And again, just a nice job, Hibbert. Nice bounce pass, holds the ball high, gets the defender's hands up in the air. And then slips the bounce pass down low. And again, you can't say enough about the interior passing of both of these teams, but particularly Georgetown and their big men. Big men aren't supposed to be able to drop bounce passes and pinpoint passes inside within three and four feet. Len they just fans, don't do it. Len fans will remember Georgetown defeated Duke earlier this year when they were number one. When Georgetown beat Syracuse a couple of weeks ago on senior day, as McNamara's three rims out. Coach John Thompson said the win over Syracuse was bigger than the win over Duke. And when he was asked why, he said, well, it's Syracuse. And the history of this rivalry, this is the rivalry that really helped build the Big East into what it has become. And John Thompson III grew up on that rivalry, watching his father toil. So he has a firm understanding. Jesse Sapp. Wide right on the three rebound McNamara great look ahead Devendorf 
And the follow is put back in by Devendorf. It's a one-point game. Well, first of all, give Sapp some credit. Shot the ball, hit the deck. Devendorf leaked out, and Sapp did a nice job of recovering. His teammates conceded the layup and got on their horses a little bit too late. They should have gotten a rebound there. Green on the baseline, blocked from behind, but Hibbert there to put it home. Boy, Darren Watson's very active inside, making his presence felt, but there's no quit in Georgetown either. Watkins closing in on a hundred blocks on the season one of the highest totals in Syracuse history. Devendorf off the glass. Ten points for Devendorf. Eight of them here in the second half. And here's where Georgetown's tempo control comes into play. Syracuse speeding the game up a little bit. Georgetown doesn't want and can't afford quick shots allowing Syracuse to get out in transition. Again, big to big passing and a push going against Syracuse. Hibbert and Green really doing some nice things together. Well, they played so well together on a high low. Now here you saw Sapp on the deck, hustles back, gets a block, and then there was the miss, and Georgetown just didn't get there. And here's Devendorf once again putting it on the floor. We said best penetrator, best slasher that Syracuse has when you're looking to finish. But Devendorf looks for his shot. For the most part, rather than setting other people up, unlike Jerry McNamara. Jeff Green at the line knocks down the first. He and Hibbert, the two big guys in the game for Georgetown, showing they're some of the best passing big men in the nation. Green, a 61% free throw shooter, one of the few holes in his game, but he swishes both of these. Well, I'll tell you, when you talk about the passing among big men, when you can run high, low, and block the block, and Recognize the double teams and bounce it to your teammate makes it so tough on the defense takes away double teams and allows you to go one on one eventually. Devendorf being hounded by Ashanti Cook gets inside again. Good help there for the block by Jeff Green. And I told you Devendorf when he penetrates he's looking for his. Yep. You got to recognize the defense. It's OK to go for your own shot but you got to read the D. Devendorf four for 12 tonight. He's attempted more shots than any other Syracuse player in this game. Green. Hibbert. And he's fouled. Green airballed the shot, but Hibbert is such a target for every ball that's up around the rim. But don't forget the second semifinal for the Big East Championship presented by Aero Postal comes your way next right here on ESPN. The number two seed and second ranked Villanova Wildcats taking on a 16th ranked Pittsburgh. Remember, number one UConn has been knocked out. Villanova's got a shot. Obviously, it would, they're going to be a one seed. It would appear they're going to play at the Wachovia Center in Philadelphia. It would appear they're going to play in the regional in Washington. They've got a chance to go into the tournament as the top overall seed in the nation, depending on how things shake out in the next couple of days. Timeout Syracuse with 410 to go. These teams, as mentioned, have met 11 times before in the Big East Championship. Let's go all the way back to the first one, 1980. This game was in Syracuse. Louis Orr led Syracuse. Sleepy Floyd starring for Georgetown. Roosevelt Bowie called for a travel. And Georgetown won 87 to 81. That's, this game was held, that one you just saw, in Providence, Rhode Island. Greg Shelton was named the tournament MVP. The 12th meeting in Big East Championship history. Georgetown leads 6 to 5. They won 4 out of 5 in championship games. The first one was held in Providence. Then they went to Syracuse. Then they went to Hartford. The last 24 have been here. And Big John Thompson. Standing behind that man who's rudely <laughs> blocking Big John Thompson. That, man, it's hard is to big, block that big. man is there big too. <laughs> There's Big John. Six Big East championships for Georgetown, tied with UConn for the most. Syracuse has four, including one last year. Now the Hall of Famer, one of the all-time greats. You know, and just the king of Washington D.C. Yeah. Understand that in his radio show, he got a lifetime deal. So the folks don't want to be without Big John and his wisdom. As you said before, Len Devendorf looking for his, and he ran right into a seven foot two inch wall known as Roy Hibbert. Green, nobody stops the ball. And again, the big guys doing some beautiful passing in the paint. 
And again, you talk about the unselfishness, but also you got to be a good passer and you have to have excellent hands. 56 53 Georgetown. Late in the semis here in New York. Welcome back to New York Syracuse trying to pull off another win in advance to the semis Georgetown had a couple of close wins the first two rounds a narrow lead here tonight. Let's take you back to the first couple of days and what Jerry McNamara has done final seconds against Cincinnati Wednesday the running three with less than a second to go and Syracuse wins 74 73 then against top ranked UConn yesterday a three to force overtime and the orange would win an OT to advance to the semis he has had a memorable couple of days. Here in New York can he and the orange do it again or will Georgetown survive in advance yet again the winner going on to the final against the winner of Villanova and Pittsburgh our next semifinal here tonight on ESPN. You know I've been saying it for the last day or so something magical about the Syracuse team. You know they've, they've gotten some breaks they've made some breaks. You know you look at a guy like Matt Gorman giving them a lift just at a time when they need him Terrence Roberts not really productive. Jerry McNamara comes and turns it on here in the second half and they close a 15 point deficit. We're getting set up for another heroic play. An impressive turnaround for a team that was beaten by 39 by DePaul eight days ago. Syracuse trying to hustle the ball down the court. The Orange fans wanted a foul there on that collision in the paint. Jerry McNamara still barking at one of the officials. Well, that might have been a good no call situation. Both guys going for the ball. And it was Nichols that actually ran into the defender who was stationary. And well, that's actually Syracuse's first turnover of the second half. Well, that goes a long way in making a comeback, <laughs> not giving yep. it back to the other guy. Shot clock at five. Bowman looking for Hibbert. And the bounce pass goes out of bounds. Let's take a look at that collision at the other end. Well, you take a look right here. Hibbert in good defensive position. And it was yep. Nichols that actually ran into the defender. So there's incidental contact good restraint by the officials McNamara's got Bowman on him right now McNamara goes baseline falls down and the pass eludes Matt Gorman as McNamara slipped and if you're Georgetown time and score situation three point lead about 240 left you got to make Syracuse pay on this possession Georgetown with just one timeout left they've committed only four fouls here this half. Syracuse over the limit right now the arrow favors the Hoyas less than two and a half to go Georgetown clinging to a three point lead. A deep three for Cook. Yeah, Hebert rebound. with the rebound and he's gone to the line for a couple of free throws. Jerry McNamara in his attempt to make something happen tried to stay low. Obviously in turn in the corner lost his footing and Hibber just battling Watkins down low does a nice job of getting to a spot in front of the rim where it's good position to get the offensive rebound. Len Hibbert now 0 for 3 from the line in this game he and Jeff Green have missed some big free throws in the last couple of minutes Georgetown as a team has missed their last five. Hibbert pretty good at 74 percent. Got some air under that one, and the lead goes to four. A pro Syracuse crowd here in New York for the most part. An orange team that was down 15 at halftime and has never led. Nichols would have been huge. Hibbert, another rebound, is 13th of the game. Syracuse has got to be careful in settling for the jumpers, unless it's Jerry McNamara, because that's his game. Especially the long jumpers. Got to put pressure on the defense. And again, Georgetown's going to milk the clock. They can get it under a minute and a half on this possession. Bowman almost lost it. Green with two on the shot clock. Ball still in play. Oh, what a killer that is for Syracuse. Jeff Green. Presence of mind after he fumbles the ball, stays with it as the shot was taken. Obviously, desperation shot, and it came off long and green right there. 
12th offensive rebound for Georgetown. Remember they had 17 in their win over Syracuse two weeks ago. That was the most painful one of all for Syracuse fans. Green shot way off. Rebound Gorman under a minute to go. And a timeout taken by Jim Beheim. Well, Syracuse pulled games out against Cincinnati and Connecticut, making it 100% sure that they're going to the NCAA tournament. Georgetown, you knew they were going before they came in. They've had narrow wins against Marquette and Notre Dame going back the second round and the first round. These, the four games these two teams have played have all been nail biters. That's the way it's been in this league all season long. Well, again, we talk about the idea of parity, but it goes beyond that. It goes to the point where guys know each other, coaches know their teams, and the other guys' team, they're able to set up and, and essentially stop what you do best, forcing teams to adjust. And when you do that, there's a lack of comfort, and it comes down to close game situations. Now, the one factor that separates the really good teams is obviously talent and when you have one or two guys that are out there that can get the job done in clutch situations you've got an advantage and with Syracuse you recognize all you need is one all you need is to play good defense stay close and then you let your clutch guy like a Jerry McNamara take over you wonder if Georgetown has that clutch guy in a close game situation McNamara's had a big second half Syracuse has had a very little inside presence very little post offense tonight Georgetown obviously is going to focus a lot of their defensive attention on McNamara. What does Syracuse do? What, what, what else can they try to do to get some offense? Well, again, it, it's certainly going to be Jerry McNamara. A little ball movement to kind of lull the man-to-man -to, -man to sleep. I mean, 33 seconds on the shot clock gives Syracuse plenty of time, you know, to get a, a shot off. But then, obviously, if they're going to be looking for a three with McNamara, they want to use maybe half of that time, give themselves a chance. McNamara got it! A three! It's a one-point game, and Syracuse will use another timeout. Man, has he been clutch this week. Man, I'm surprised, though. You know that McNamara's going to touch it. You see him get it off the inbound. You got to step up, and you got to play it. I mean, look how much room he's given. Once he receives, there's nobody in front of him. And they just let him go up to the three-point line before he's contested. It's the same kind of thing Jim Calhoun was talking about after yesterday's game, how they just gave Jerry McNamara too much free space to roam. You got to make him handle. You got to make any great shooter put it on the floor, change direction, get him out of rhythm. That was a perfect rhythm shot for Jerry McNamara. McNamara five threes, all of them in the second half, 17 points overall. Again, McNamara receives, just steps right through. Guys reaching, nobody in front of them. They came laterally, but you got to get in front. Huge couple of games against Cincinnati and Connecticut, and the number is getting right up in that territory again here tonight after this big second half. 48 seconds left in the game. Georgetown with the ball. And a one point lead. The arrow in the Hoyas' favor. Each team with one timeout. McNamara wants his gang to make some noise, and they oblige. And obviously, with 26 seconds on the shot clock, Syracuse is going to get the ball back. They're just going to make a stop right here. Hibbert looking for some space on the inside, bumping with Watkins and Gorman. Looking to run that high low with Green and Hibbert. Cook, five on the shot clock. Gorman got a hand on it. Syracuse has the ball. McNamara to Devendorf, and they've got their first lead of the night. Georgetown's going to play it out. Four seconds to go. And a travel. Syracuse has the ball. Are you telling me there's no magic in this house tonight? Unbelievable. Breakdown defensively by Georgetown. No direction on the offensive end. And you give Syracuse the defense credit for that. Never let Georgetown into their set against the zone. But it all began with giving Jerry McNamara that clean look on the three. I think that's what deflated Georgetown's chances to win this ball game. Subs coming in for both teams on that run out. Jeff Green tried to foul. Georgetown had a couple to get, but he couldn't catch McNamara, who fed Devendorf. 
1.5 seconds to go. And a foul is called on Owens, who just knocked Josh Wright to the ground because they don't want McNamara shooting free throws. And there are no free throws. It's just the fifth foul on Georgetown. They're walking the floor as if they're going to shoot free throws. But the scoreboard here indicates that's only the fifth team foul on Georgetown. They're going to have to foul again and then again to get him to the line unless the ball gets inbounded and they somehow come up with a steal. Two tenths of a second come off the clock. Two fouls and one point three. Georgetown has just got to go for the steal right now. You know, I put a man on the ball or I get a guy to play center field and take a guess. And I think the officials are going to look at a monitor to see how much time, if any, should have come off the clock. Another remarkable sequence, though. The McNamara three, a Syracuse steal. McNamara feeding Devendorf for the layup. This is the first time all night Syracuse has led. They were down 15 at halftime, and if the Orange win, this will be the largest comeback from a halftime deficit in Big East tournament history. The foul was called, in my opinion, before the ball was inbounded. And that's why they should put the 1.5 back. Remember, the clock doesn't start till somebody inbounds touches the ball, and that's what they're going to do, and that's the correct call. So it's back to 1.5, and we'll see how the Hoyas play it now. Five team fouls this half committed by Georgetown. Got to go for the steal. And a foul is called now with five tenths of a second left. Demetrius Nichols is the guy who got wrapped up, but again, that's just the sixth team foul. So still no free throws, and a precious second came off the clock. From Syracuse, I just looked to try to throw it to half court. Just yep. have somebody touch it, and it's over. And it's over. Another remarkable win for the Syracuse Orange. Led by their senior Jerry McNamara, an incredible second half comeback and a one point win for Syracuse. The only time the entire game they had the lead. The first time in a Big East tournament history in 17 tries that a team that lost in overtime the day before wins their next game. And the Orange will have a chance to defend their title tomorrow night. Boy, what a change in defense by Syracuse. First half, Georgetown very comfortable against the zone. But here in moving the ball, drive baseline, you know the double team is coming. There's the steal. And in Hibbert, just not quick enough to get back. I don't even think he knew Devendorf was behind him. Once again, driving the baseline, there's the double team, something that the second half you saw more of. And Hibbert trying to get back, never saw Devendorf running the lane. And we mentioned before, Syracuse so tough in transition out of that zone. Syracuse with three wins in this tournament by a total, a total of four points. Derek Coleman is on the floor now, hugging Jerry McNamara. Lawrence Moten is out there. Pearl Washington is in the house. A big win for the program, not only for the current members of the Orange and Dad Jerry, Mom Joyce looking on. Let's go cross court. Mark Jones standing by with Jerry McNamara. They're chanting Jerry, and why not? Jerry, take us through the three pointer that brought you guys close with 49 seconds to go. What were you thinking on that sequence? Well, same thing I thought uh, yesterday. If I had a little bit of room, I was going to take it. If they came out, I was going to go. And I got by that first guy, and the, the next guy didn't step up all the way, and I just took it. Have you ever been a part of a magical run like this in your life in basketball? What does this mean? Well, I'm so proud of our guys. We could have easily quit. We could have came down here and laid over. And for us to make the finals after the year that we've had is pretty impressive. I'm just so proud of these guys. What does it mean? to make that play where Devendorf finishes it off. Take us through that play. Well, I'm happy for Eric. You know, he's such a great player, and he's made so many great plays in this tournament for us. But I've been the one to make the last shot, and he's kind of got overshadowed. So Demetrius made a great outlet pass, and I think it was Hibbert stepped up, and, and he was open, so I gave it to him. I'm just, I'm just happy he, he was knowledge enough to know where to go, and, and he's, he's played great for us. Jerry, thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, he's being held together, Dan, by spit, tape, and glue. <laughs> He'll be in the ice tub tonight. What a game. Some 
kind of ball game here tonight. And we got another one coming. The Wildcats and the Panthers have already taken the court. We're about 20 minutes away from the second semifinal here at the Big East Championship presented by Aeropostal with a winner to take on the Orange in the championship game tomorrow night, 8 p.m., right here on ESPN. What a game. What a comeback. Syracuse 58, Georgetown 57. Sports Center is next here on ESPN. Then come on right back and join us for Pitt and Villanova. Dan Shulman, Len Omar, and Mark Jones hoping you're with us for the second semifinal after that great comeback by the Orange.